well, 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 well. And Instagram as well. Welcome to you for joining me over there in Instagram land on Silburn TV. And for those on Facebook, welcome, welcome, welcome. And of course, if you are here for the first time, hi. And I invite you onto the red chair to be my guest. One of my guests on the red chair today. And whereby we'll be having a discussion. We'll have a conversation as much as possible following up on the great developments which has been happening over the past few days and since um, the passing of Sir George Floyd. May he rest in peace. And uh, we have seen what has been happening and uh, it's very interesting and it is very uh, concerning. But the most important thing is why is it happening? Where is it going? And what do you think it's about? And what's your thoughts on it? That is something that I like to know today. Um, this is this is a, a topic which has been um, on the lips of everyone, on the lips of everyone for a season. And this small season is a season as much as possible. But what we don't want is for this season to be a, a season which actually just goes away, pass away, and become like a deja vu, and becoming like a nine-day wonder. We're onto something big here, very something big. And at the same time, while it is something big, got to make sure that we understand what is really happening. That's the most important thing. When you follow and when you're doing getting into something, try to make sure that you understand what is happening. But I think the breaking news which has come in today, and um, I'm trying to get some more information on it, but apparently the other three policemen were charged. Other three policemen were charged today and which is good news for the family and what the family had wanted um, in since the death of, of Mr. George Floyd is that no justice, no peace, but that's an important thing is that the three policemen um, were also complicit and be a part of the process with the killing of Mr. Floyd, uh, George Floyd, as today understand being charged. And what I don't know as well is the full details of it. It flashed up on my phone just a few minutes ago, and I'm trying to get some more information as to what happened. I understand that the charge for the the, 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 the police officer who, was, who had his um, feet on Mr. Floyd's neck, I understand that he also was upgraded to second degree. I'm not too sure of that. I'm just trying to get some information as well. Um, as to that, let me just check something here. If you, if you, new charges brought over George Floyd's debt. Uh, here it is. Here it is. New charges have been announced against all the sacked police officers present at the death of African American George Floyd in Minneapolis. The charge against Derek Chauvin has been elevated. Yes, as I, I was correct. I was correct. So, second degree murder. Court documents show the other three. Officers face counts of aiding and abetting murder, the document states. Floyd's death has sparked huge protests, as we have known, across the USA, yeah, against racism and the police killing of black Americans. Vast emergency of demonstration over the past eight days have been peaceful, but some have turned violent and curfews have been imposed in a number of cities. Why? Right? Derek had initially been faced charge of third degree murder and Mansell, these will stay on his charge sheet. And the Minnesota Senator said on Twitter that the latest charge were another important step for justice. So this case remind me of, um, I think when I, just before I came, just before I came to the UK, um, there was the um, Rodney King. And I remember doing the Rodney King bit, what really went crazy was at that moment. It was that moment when they were actually waiting for the verdict. And everybody was waiting for the verdict. And they were waiting for that verdict. That verdict was so crucial, right? The verdict. And when that verdict came and, and actually overturned, I'm not overturned, but acquitted those officers, that's when things happened. So I'm looking at this now as some level of a, a similarity to a certain extent whereby Yes, the charges are there and people can be appeased that the wheels of justice is turning. No justice, no peace. So the wheels of justice have been turning whereby they've all been charged now. Okay. I don't know if they have been arrested, the other three, but they have been charged, all of them. So the wheels of justice is turning. No justice, no peace. 
the wheels of justice is turning. And as a result of the wheels of justice turning, we are seeing um, a shift. Now, it is left to wonder if the demonstration will actually um, slow down or everybody will go home or it is gonna continue until, and I say, until the, um, the verdict. Now that is going to be um, very, very interesting. And when I look at the, and one of the things that I, I wanted to share as well, and, and just my thoughts, when I look at the, and many people, when they look at the demonstrations, and they all, and I think everyone, everyone totally agree and accept that this demonstration and the protest is appropriate and it is correct worldwide that we are seeing countries, Brazil today, we are seeing New Zealand, uh, everyone in Jamaica as well, everyone standing in the UK here, Trafalgar Square, people are kneeling, uh, people are standing or, or whatever like that. Everyone agree that the need for the protest is there, the protest, the demonstration is there. But one thing also that everyone also agreed on, everyone agreed as well that there's no need for the looting, there's no need for the hijacking of the memory of Mr. Uh, George Floyd, but as a result, everyone says that that should stop. It seems to a certain extent that many are saying different forces. You know, I, I just remember, just I just thought of, uh, is it John Boy? What whatever is the guy name? The guy from um, uh, what's his name? The guy from um, Star Star Trek, Star, Star Wars. I don't watch Star Wars, and he was just mad. He's just angry. He's like. Is like cross, miserable, angry, angry, cross, miserable, like bounty killer, cross, angry, miserable. And you would think that at any moment now they're going to, the force is going to take him because the force is with him. Many people come at it from different angles in the sense of how they actually um, go about the process of demonstrating and, and venting their anger, venting their passion. Something that struck me very powerfully, I must say, and that was today, and that's why I said, I, I didn't want to just come on and I didn't want to have a guest because I, I do have some guests from California who used to come on and to talk about uh, COVID and uh, wanting to undertake the test and wasn't able to, a father and a son, and they're from California. But I said, let me just switch a bit and maybe incorporate them to talk about this whole issue which is happening in America because they're also activists. And, and when, when I thought about it, something struck me today you see, we had recently the lockdown, yeah? And, and the, lo the lockdown was for a season where everybody was actually um, quarantined, isolated, not able to do what they want to do, not able to go where they want to go. Churches can't be open. Business places can't be open. Um, families separated. If you're there, you stay there. You don't move unless you're going to break it, unless you're going to do some gym screech across the border or whatever like that. So everybody was sort of locked down. And yeah, and 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 as my producer just said something to my wife, <laughs> my wife, <laughs> you know. Um, so 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 in the course of this um period with the COVID, and I'm very concerned about um with um, what I'm seeing with the demonstration as we're easing the lockdown, they're talking about two meters. We can all agree that there's no two meters, which is happening. And the worst thing about it is that people who are out there actually go home to their families and give them COVID. Uh, we don't know. We just hope and pray that that doesn't happen. We watch to see if there may be any, any, any spike or not. So, so let's watch the space on that. So it came to me very, very forcefully, I must say. It came to me very forcefully that because of the lockdown and because of the many frustration as well, it's like it also added another level of energy to what we are seeing, right? So we are seeing the different forces that is leading the demonstration. But at the same time, one would say that the demonstrations have been hijacked by different forces. It is like there is this level of pandemonia, another level of pandemonia, whereby people are actually venting their frustration to the world system. People are venting their frustration to the government. We know right now in the UK, many are unhappy with the government, right? Many are unhappy with uh, President Trump. Many are also unhappy on the other side with Trump, with, with Boris, yes? Because one of the things with Republicans and conservatives, 
there is always this level of toxic energy which comes out. And many are actually saying that this has been hijacked because of political force. Many people are even going further that this whole thing is, is a part of a, a plot in order leading up to this election in November, right? And then many others at the same time are saying that there's a level of racism, there's a level of frustration, there's a level of anger that actually make people actually want to blow. They're, they're, they're angry, they want to vent, and here's an opportunity to vent, right? Some people are saying that, I don't care, mash up everything, you know, tear down this, tear down that, in, in the sense of actually if this is happening. So therefore, those in power can actually um, feel the force. They want everybody to feel the force. So when I look, and when many person look, and they said, and I see people in people in, in America as well, people actually say, but why are you here? Why are you putting be, um, Black Lives Matters on the wall? Why are you actually robbing some of these companies and breaking down some of these business places why are you doing that and and you're white you know so 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 it's there's a level of confusion which is happening out there you got different persons are actually saying that this is not what mr george floyd would want in his memory but we are seeing now we are seeing now that the majority of demonstration the majority of protests is actually becoming more peaceful, more stable. It is like the looters have got what they want, if anything like that. And it's like, and because of the force of the police now and the National Guard, which has come out, it seems like things are now settling down whereby, guess what? This is the issue. It's kind of happening anymore and law and order is in place. Many people are unhappy with that, but law and order is in place. Now, let's, let's move on to um, some of the effects of this demonstrations and these different ways how people can demonstrate. One of the things that I've seen as well during the course of this time is whereby there's an emotional element which is out there. An emotional element whereby you are supposed to actually feel a particular way if you're black and you're supposed to feel another particular way if you're white. And if you don't do that, you're complicit. And many of the quotes which have been used and going around is like the quote from Malcolm, not Malcolm X, um, 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 what's his name, um, you know, Martin Luther King. And one of the quotes, uh, and I can't recall it, is saying that if you're silent or something like that, that means you see you're complicit, you're part of the problem. And those things have been used and thrown around and hitting at people left, right, and center. I've seen persons like uh, Mr. Uh, you know, the gentleman from Soul Solid Crew, Ashley Walters, crying, bawling as well, because people are saying he did not um, comment or did not post things upon his wall. Um, yesterday was blackout day where people were supposed to black out all their things and not deal with, dealing with any sort of social media work. People are watching people's pages and say, hey, why are you not doing something? Hey, what's going on? I don't know if you experience it or sense it. Right. So there is, there's, I consider that there is a, a level of emotions which are being whipped up. And, and I see, when I see these sort of demonstrations and where people say you must post something and you have to do this, I start to think to myself, and hear me out, it's like, isn't it the same thing as in slavery, where you're controlled how to thought, how to think? You're controlled as to what to do. You're like a, a blinker was put on your eyes whereby that is what you should do. And if you don't do that, you're broken. You are, you are criticized, not just by in criticism, but you're whipped. And this is like in government sometimes, you're whipped into a position where that is how you should think. That's how you should operate. That's how you should vote. And that's why many people are actually saying now, everything now, go and vote. Go and vote. And when you say go and vote, you try to say, what do you vote for? What is it that you vote for when they say go and vote? Is it to vote out Trump or is it to vote in proper laws? Is it to vote in the right leadership? Is it to vote in the right person that can actually follow through with the wishes of the area, that municipal, that city, that town? 
And this is not just only for, for the USA, because the UK also have issues when it comes down to racism, where I believe that it's very important that while there's the issue of the heart, while there's the issue of the emotion which is happening, there's also the clear need, I believe, for people to have proactive action, not waiting for when something happens, but to be proactive and to think ahead. I kid you not, you can always, you can anticipate someone will always try to influence your emotions. Um, thank you for that, sir. Uh, um, yeah. Um, I believe personally that government already foresee and anticipate the various different actions. And by virtue of government anticipating the various actions, whatever people do, they have them covered. And actually, if you're not careful, you can actually be um, play right into the hands of the government of Trump or what, whatever government is in place. So when we say vote, what are we voting for? When we say, let's organize, we need to do all of this together. What does that really mean? What are you organizing to? Listen, I empathize. And I see the clear need for protests. I see the clear need for, pro for demonstration. I see the clear need for united in the fact that this was uh, an act which was illegal, which is murder. They said at the same time that at what point does being on the, on the, with his feet on the neck warrant to premeditation, warrant to the men's ray to kill? The actus reus is always there. When something about to get killed, somebody get punched, somebody attacked, the act is real, the act, the act is there. And that's a fact. But the men's real now is a mind. When did it actually kick in with the motivation and the desire to kill? And actually, what they came up with is this. When someone actually now is pushing against and say, I can't breathe. When you hear you can't breathe, that means to say, what is happening now? You're in the process of being suffocated. And to be, suffo to be suffocated, that means to say one is dying. I can't breathe. My heart is hurting. Blah, blah, blah. Wait, wait, wait. People are saying, the guy is dying. He's dead. He's dead. Whatever. And the person keeps putting that feet on him. That's where the premeditation comes. That is where the actus, that's where we move from the actus reus, because actus reus is already there, but that's when that kicks in. Who do you vote for? That's a big question. Who do you vote for? Is it for the mayor? Funny, I haven't heard from that mayor since. Who do you vote for? Do you vote for the police commissioner? So when you say go and vote, there, there's, it is very clear, ladies and gentlemen, it is very clear that there's a lack of leadership when we watch the whole thing which is happening. There's a lack of strategic, organized leadership. Let me just look at a couple of comments here. Um, that pressure should not force you to comply with an action. I'm raging. I could easily join in with the protests and get caught up in the action. My opinion is without organization, we can find people who found themselves joining mobilization. Yeah, that, that's, that's a viewpoint. Yeah. At, at what point does that action and all these be realized into something? I tell you, which, which, what, what, is really, what is really interesting um, is uh, a message I got from someone from the States. And this was very, this was very interesting. And, and I'm going to actually, the person said actually um, that they, 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 they H, HR called them and said, um, do you want to talk? Are you okay? Um, you know, HR folks are here and we are really ready to talk to you. Is everything fine? Um, and somebody actually reach out again and say, um, can we pray for you, uh, if anything? So this is not a black person who is proud, who is successful, and is going about their business. And um, do recognize that there's racism. Um, do recognize that there are issues. But somehow, at the moment, felt a bit extra vulnerable. Felt a very fun way when someone is trying to reach out and say, are you OK? Are you all right? Is everything cool? So now you're now we are actually finding ourselves, if you're not careful, in a sort of position whereby one is seen to be not that strong. Um, we are seeing what the COVID report is actually saying that BME, which I don't like, I hate categories, I hate being stigmatized into this category, into this aisle, this ethnic aisle, ethnic minority, quote unquote, are more prone 
to be infected by COVID-19 and as a result, die. So therefore, that is something there. So therefore, we're prone to sickness, prone to be vulnerable, suffering and scarred from the atrocities of slavery, which is, which is the case. That is it. Because that is what this is actually saying. So now one is somewhat supposed to feel a particular way. And now we're asked to kneel. And someone contacted me and said, Silbert, I don't like this kneeling thing. I understand what Kaepernick was doing. But the kneeling thing that we saw was the death of Mr. George Floyd. And we are kneeling. Maybe they are going for the cup. I sometimes wonder if some of these things are thought through properly as much as possible. And therefore, for persons who do not want to actually be a part of it, but want to somewhat show their, um, what should I say, level of respect, another way, they should not be, what should I say? They should not be, um, be criticized. They should not be um, ostracized and they should not be treated in any way differently because of the fact that that is how they choose. So lots of persons don't subscribe to Black Lives Matters, Black Lives Issues, but, but many persons at the same time recognize that Black Lives Matters, Black Lives Matters. And I do understand the principle. And, and, and while I believe also that all life matters, I also strongly believe that as something is going around saying, if a house, is burning down on the street and you say all houses matter. The issue is that the one which is burning down is the one which is crucial. That house matters. Not all the houses, all the other houses are okay. That house matters. So therefore on that principle, I agree with, this, with the stance, Black Lives Matters. But then someone said at the same time, why if Black Lives Matters, why is it not applied in Chicago, in places whereby lots of lives are being killed, black and black. Why Black Lives Matter doesn't apply there? Or is it, as someone pointed out, is it when you have a, a, a white person or a person like a police officer kill a black person, then that is when it matters. So therefore, is it that the death of someone by police, that person has been elevated to a higher level than the person who actually are being killed daily, black and black. So these are the things that one has got to consider. So when we say we vote for, we vote, go out and vote, make sure you, you vote. Who do you vote for? Or is it just to get rid of Trump? If that's the answer, maybe that's the answer, get rid of Trump because Trump has been the one who was causing this all these years. But lo and behold, it has been pointed out again that during Obama, he also had it, police brutality. So I look at it in a sense and say, what is created and what is needed is more of solutions. People are asking, where is Farrakhan? Where is the Sharpton? Where is the Jesse Jackson? Where are those key leaders at this time? Or maybe they are like what I think at times. You can't all be on the forefront. Something you gotta be in the background, be in the war room, like with Churchill during the course of the time when, when there was war whereby they were in the, you wouldn't expect churches to be on the front line taking up his gun. Definitely not. He's more taking up his cigar. Yep. And therefore, one has got to question and say, where are these persons? Where is the key leadership? Even in the UK, and what, what, what I've been seeing, where is that key factor leadership? Okay. So therefore, now, the, the three persons have been charged along with the, 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 the key gentleman to a, a second degree. So therefore, should the whole demonstration stop? Or is it something bigger? Is it something bigger whereby there's this ultimate frustration with government? Is it something bigger where there's an ultimate frustration with how the world is? Is it an opportunity now to say, I appall Brexit? Is it an opportunity now to say, I appall Trump? Is it an opportunity now to say, let's, 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 Let's get the government that we want. Let's get, get the things that we want now and, and use this as an opportunity. Is that it? Let me take some comments here now. Not a party. You must leverage, um, you must leverage individuals who assume positions of authority. A vote alone does not cut it. That's it. A vote alone does not cut it. 
Lawlessness does not occur in a vacuum. If those who are supposed to uphold an ideal do not visibly demonstrate this behavior, then there would be no surprise at the outbreak of looting or rioting. It is not the same comparison involved for black civilian murder another black civilian. It, involved, it is not the same if a, if, if a black civilian murder another black civilian, it's the police. Andrew, Andrew, I appear to be dominating. <laughs> Listen, um, um, Andrew, don't, don't feel bad about domin dominating the, the thread. I've, I've invited persons to actually come on and actually join me on the red chair. And uh, and if you choose to be on the red chair at this time, then you are on the red chair. So feel uh, feel, feel important. This is this is your show as well. I'm just a platform. I'm just throwing throwing these these thoughts out because um, you know I. I listen to people, and, and people sometimes know that I'm very con controversial in certain views. Uh, people actually message me as a silver. I know you're controversial, but uh, one person actually messaged me this morning, and the person said, I don't know, I'm feeling very uncomfortable. I'm all for the blackout thing last night, but I'm feeling uncomfortable. I feel like I'm, I'm not in control. I feel like I'm being led. I feel like I've been led up a garden path. I, I, I'm just not uncomfortable. I'm just uncomfortable. Right, because I feel like I'm not in control. And then, as I alluded to the point, in in the slavery period of time, there were forefathers, you know, for those who are from the Caribbean or so, who are descendants of persons from slavery. But being a descendant of persons from slavery, that doesn't mean to say that's your ultimate descendants. And that is something that we've got to be careful about. And I want to speak this point very forcefully, because. I'm seeing so much pity, pity me. Oh, I'm angry. Um, I'm vulnerable. The treatment bad and whatever like that. But I don't know if it's in the Bible or so. But there's a level of casting off of rich restraints, whereby one has got to now click in to the recognition of your ultimate ancestry, your ancestors. It's from Ghana. It's from Nigeria. Is it, is it some parts of West Africa, North Africa, whereby the history is rich? So the, the, the whole purpose of the transatlantic slavery is and should be what, it, what, what is called an interruption process. So that's not the ultimate history. That's a part of the history. So therefore, there's a need for somehow for there to be a, a transformation. I use it a lot, transform whereby one now start to look at the ultimate history as to where you're from. And then at the same time, one has got to look as to your DNA. What is your DNA? What is your new DNA? If you're a child of God, if you're, if you're a child of a king, now do you wallow in self-pity? And so therefore, it seems at the same time that there is a searching there's this ultimate searching which is going on out there, an ultimate total search. Everybody's searching for an answer. Everybody's searching for a solution. Everybody wants to feel accepted, want to feel special. And now all of a sudden, everybody's saying, I don't feel special. I feel rejected. I feel hurt. They're saying, I've been for years. And there's this pent up thing which is in persons. Then you have to ask yourself, then why some don't feel it? Is it that they are of a different breed or whatever like that? Why some persons are not actually expressing such? And why should others try to impose upon them how to think and how to feel and whip them up in a frenzy? I put a post out the other day and the post was saying, one has got to be careful of the media, whereby the media will take you on a journey, whip you up into a frenzy, Get all these emotions going, you know? Then after a while, they close you like a deal. Close you like a deal. And when they close you like a deal, they got you. And then guess what? They kick on to another topic and they take you with you because now you're vulnerable. Now you're in their hand like putty because you did not take control and you did not position yourself. We have seen it. It just happened recently. It is evident before very eyes. COVID, right? I don't know where COVID is. Where is that geezer? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They say he's there, he's there around, but we don't know if he's around or whatever like that, okay? 
So therefore, what happened now? COVID came, we locked down. COVID came, we isolate. COVID came, we in quarantine. No work, nothing. I just went to a, a shop a while ago where we're going to do a video because they are actually donating a lot of goods, lots of um, food to destitute families who have suffered as a result of COVID because they're not done in quarantine. Some of them are not able to get some of the money from the government. So the, the, the schools have identified vulnerable families who are in a destitute state. So as a result of that, now they are actually going to help them. So I did a video recently. If you go onto my YouTube channel, you'll see it in the area. And um, lots of food banks are coming up because people are finding themselves in these other situations. So there's a level of frustration and level of anger because they have not, by their choice, has put the, uh, is in this situation. Then all of a sudden, there's no COVID. All of a sudden, everybody's on the street and the media whipped up, depending on who you listen to, CNN, then you're saying Trump is the most evilest man in the world. Fox, the Democrats is the most evilest people in the world with Antifa and all those sort of things. CNN, white, super. And then if you're not careful, you find yourself going down a particular road. And if you listen to that, you get confused. That's why my video this morning, what I said was, shh, or yesterday, shh, be still. Don't be easily led. Be still. Don't be easily led. Take control. Take control. Whether it's Black Lives Matter or whatever like that, just because it's of your race or whatever like that, that doesn't mean to say you have to follow it. You need to understand what you're following because you find yourself in a situation where you're whipped up into a frenzy, whipped up with your emotions, and then you find yourself whereby you're controlled. What difference is it from slavery, may I ask? What difference it is whereby you're not able to actually think for yourself, but you feel you've got to follow a particular pattern, a particular style, and then you have to conform. The Bible says, be, be not conformed, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. But then at the same time, you have preachers fighting against preachers, preachers upset with Trump, you know? So therefore there's a lack of togetherness. I'll look at some comments here, if I can. Um, as one individual can feed police, do I really understand the collectivity of action for a common goal is possible? The talking to eliminate racism has only just begun. It will take years to eliminate racism. Police need, policies need to put in force and adhere to sanction need to be put in place. Political political shame. I'm sorry, I'm going to differ right there because I believe we never get rid of racism. Racism has been there from the Bible started and racism will be there, I think, till the end until Jesus come back, until God is in control. Or, well, God is in control, but until everything, I, I don't believe racism is going to go. I, I don't believe there's discrimination is going to go as long as there's sin and there's evil in the hearts of man. I think what is fundamental and what is created, what is really needed is an individual understanding who they are, why they were created, what is their purpose on this earth, to free them to the realization that they have a DNA and they've got a destiny. And therefore, if it is that, you've got to have some fights, you've got to have some challenges, then you've got to have those fights, you've got to have those challenges. If that's your call, that's your call, right? Yes, we've got to work towards eliminating slavery. Yes, we have got to work towards eliminating discrimination. Yes, we've got to work to be eliminating racism. Yes, we've got to work to, to, to eradicate injustice. Yes, we've got to work to eradicate lawlessness, murder, all those things. We've got to work at that. Everyone has that call. Everyone has a desire to do that. That is important. But that doesn't mean to say that one has got to be somewhat of a weakling, right? I do not subscribe to a lot of these words which have been said. I do not subscribe just because I hear the word, I can't breathe. And I understand the principle. I understand the principle. I understand where it's coming from. I understand the rationale, but I'm not gonna go out there and say, I can't breathe. My video showed a fly, no, a bee, going around in the flowers, in the plant, breathing, breathing. And I said, I can smell the fresh air in the morning, breathing, inhaling, 
We must breathe. We must say, I can breathe. I shall breathe. I shall breathe. Now, Silburn, you're going against the grain. You understand what's that? Why are you being a troublemaker? Why are you, why are you twisting things around? Why? Why can't you just conform and, and follow? No, I choose not to. And I'm not just the only one, but maybe I'm the mouthpiece that actually speaking like this and saying certain things like that. No, I will not say I can't breathe. But I understand the principle of why I can't breathe this day because the gentleman could not breathe. You're making a point. But people need to start to say this. We shall breathe. Can you imagine if the guy was actually saying, I can't, I can't, I can't. You got to leave. The conversation will continue. The new writing will subside. Let's see a change come. There always is. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. There always is, Donna. Where is it? What do you say, Donna? Say, say, for, say more, cousin. We have to say, I shall breathe. If we're saying, I can, then Obama came and said, we can. And he went further and said, yes, we can. So therefore, you counteract the negative with the positive. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, I can. Yes, you can. So we've got to we got to grab into the reservoirs of our, of our heart, of our soul, man. Ladies and gentlemen, say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. <laughs> Ow! Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Say it again. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Come on. Listen to James Brown. Man, I'm getting excited. I want to play the music, but I won't because Facebook is going to censor me and say, uh, I want to put this up on YouTube after. And Facebook is going to say to me that uh, you are uh, copyright infringement. <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want to spoil this video by putting in James Brown and, uh, and, and I don't have the rights to it. And by the time I put the rights to it, they're going to take it down. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. What is that saying? Young, gifted, and black. Oh, my days. Come on. Come on, come on now, come on, come on. Young, gifted, and black. What is that saying? Da, 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 da. Young, gifted, and black. Proud, strong. If someone said to me, Silver, I want you to go in front of your house and I want you to kneel. I said, I kneel only before God and my wife when I was proposing to her. I'm not going to kneel. But if somebody say, go out and stand up and push your chest out and go like this, power with a with a with a with a with a, with a, with a, um, a black um, you know gloves. Yeah, I'm with that. I'm with that. Because strength, strength, I believe in. Strength. We cannot be seen as weaklings, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot be seen as poco poco. We cannot be seen as wanting to, uh, what should I say, begging for recognition, begging to be something. Like my friend in the United States of America, working, proud Jamaican. Someone said, are you okay? Are you all right? You sure you're all right? Everything cool? You sure? I've been seeing the news and see so you've been mistreated. She said, get out of here. Get out of here. It's like using the Bernie Mac thing. I'm not afraid of you. I won't say what Bernie Mac would say. Or use the, the um, what's, what's the guy's name? Um, Samuel Jackson. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Let's wake up, man. And I don't believe in woke. I do not accept certain terms. Me, I do not accept certain terms. I never say woke. Woke is past tense. I say, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Mighty people, mighty people of God, wake up. Young, gifted, and black. That is not a song of pathetic, being pathetic and, and Pyong Pyong um, Poco Poco. I can't find the words. Young, gifted, and black. That's strength, my people. Say it loud. 
I'm black and I'm proud. Ah! Say it loud. We've got to, this is, this is, listen, this is my call. My call is to wake up people, right? And I've got to speak this into atmosphere because I'm not angry. I'm energized for change. That rage and that annoyance and that sadness when I saw that man gave his last breath motivated me, challenged me to say, we've got to do it for our children, children. I saw three young people, three persons. There's a 45 year old man and his son, I believe was 16 and there was a 35 year old man. And they're on the streets, all angry. The 35 year old man said, I'm angry, but I'm angry too. And I said, and the son who's 16, he's angry. Three of them angry on the streets. Urgh! Angry, raging, raging with anger. And I said, the, the younger one who's 35 said to the young one, <clears throat> you have got to change this. Like you got to go home. We can't all be angry and frustrating and burning up. And they said, well, what, what is a proverb? A proverb that said, uh, an African proverbs that if the village, if the village don't love the child or so like that, they will burn down the village to feed the world. Let's really understand the principles behind that quote. I don't understand it really. I'm not accepting it. We don't want to feel the want. We want to be the want. We don't want to feel it, we want to be it. And that's why when I put out the other day and I start to talk about solutions, I said, and I start to put this out right amidst the whole thing and people are saying I'm insensitive or whatever. Like, I start to say, match the demonstrators with persons who are ready to go into office. Match them. If there are a thousand demonstrators, get a thousand young men who shadow, M shadow mayors. I'm going to bring in MPs as well. Shadow members of parliament. Shadow congressmen. Another hundred, not the same hundred, 100 shadow MPs. One sh uh, let's, let's use for the states. 100 shadow counts councilmen. Another shadow commissioners of police. Another shadow chief of police. I don't know, 100 shadow um, mayors, shadow congressmen, shadow senators, get into the FBI. There's a video going around where this policeman actually stopped this guy, this black guy, and sitting down. A guy said, you got the wrong person. They said, you, are the right, you got the wrong person. The guy even said, are you Jake? And the person said, no, I'm not Jake. So oh, that's the wrong person. No, you're Jake. And the, and the guy put his, the, the, the guy with the red, red shirt, apparently he's an FBI. They say he's an FBI guy. He said, um, I'm not the guy. I said, you're the guy. I said, I'm not the guy. And then <clears throat> they arrested him. You can see the put down, and you can see exactly how things can move from zero to 100. One of them was getting their hand to put it on his neck. Another one was actually um, holding him, and they handcuffed him. And his friends were saying, more than likely, maybe FBI people as well, were saying, you got the wrong man. You got the wrong man. You've got the wrong man. They keep saying, you've got the wrong man. And the guy said, look in my back pocket. Look in my back pocket. Have a look in my back pocket. Get my ID and tell me what you see. When they took out the wallet and they saw his ID, you could see they got red, literally. And they said, ah, ah, got you, got you. Is that how you guys do police? Is that how you guys do police? Is that how you guys do it? He said, I need your badge, I need your badge. Take the cuff off of me. Where is your supervisor? Supervisor came. I said, that's how you guys do police? Why well, I'm bringing that up right there. Yes, somebody will say, you could be an FBI or whatever, but you stay black. But numbers is the game. So therefore, we need more of those guys in the FBI. We need more of those persons in the CIA to change things from on the inside while things are happening at the same time. Solutions, strategic, strategic thinking. Say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Mm. Say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. That's not a song of weakness. That's a song that was birthed out of the struggle. That's a song when, Ma when Martin Luther King, my eyes have seen the glory of the coming, was to inspire persons to realize that we can do it. Not one to regress into saying, I got to kneel up, pure, 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 sad, up, pure, pure, and all those sort of things. We're looking weak, man. We're looking weak. We're looking weak. And people are seeing us as weak. COVID is saying they're going to kill us all. Oh, black people are very, um, they're prone to be sick. Oh, black people are more prone 
because they, they don't have houses where they can all live together properly, spaced out, they're all together. Black people have to be on the front line because they're not able to um, work and get quite a good houses. And, and so they're going to be on the front line, cleaning all of them. Uh, black people are, are sad because they are they're hurting their, from atrocities of slavery. So it's pity me, pity me, pity me. Well, who, 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 who? Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Mm. Young, gifted, and black. That's not a song of weakness. That's a song of strength when one actually internalize and come to the realization of who you are. Come to the realization of who you are. But I empathize. I understand why the demonstration is going on. I understand why the <clears throat> noise. I don't agree with the dem with the looting, and looting is always a byproduct of it. Someone say when the looting, the shooting starts. Somebody try to qualify it by saying actually what they mean to say. They will also take out guns, you know. Trump yeah, can't bother with that. You know what I'm saying? I do support Trump in certain things, but something I don't support Trump with. I don't support him actually in how he is being going on with this whole thing. That's why they say New Yorkers are. New Yorkers just say it bluntly. But I'm not worried about that. I'm not focused on that. My eyes have seen the glory of the Lord. I'm not, you know, I'm not worried about any man. I'm not worried about any man. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King saw that. I'm not worried about any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. And as a result of that, I need to get my people to wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, not be woke, not be woke. Walk is past tense. You're asleep. Don't be woke. That's just me. I say, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. Ladies and gentlemen, that's me. That's Silburn. And I just wanted to get that off my chest. You're a strong people. Very strong. Our history didn't start from slavery. Our history belonged before. That was an interruption process. An interrupt a process. We're strong, gifted, and black. Say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. I want those words to ring in. And don't be in self-pity. I dare you. I challenge you. Don't be in self-pity. Never, never be strong. Be rocky. Don't seek pity. Don't, 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 don't whip people into emotions, which is not even there sometimes. Don't try to force people to, to um, don't just follow, lead. Don't accept things which you don't understand. Lead from the front. Take care of your family, take care of your children, take care of your home, lead. Because what we are doing, we are regressing back into the arms of slavery in another way by saying, hands up don't shoot by saying i can't breathe i do understand the sentiments but the words that we are speaking they are not life they are death when you speak words of life words of power speak words are powerful in the beginning was the word the word was god the word was with God. The word became flesh and it dwelt among men. That's power. What you speak comes alive. So if you say, I can't breathe, you're killing yourself. You're killing yourself if you say, I can't breathe. You're speaking it into existence. Use or use, man. Come on, man. Anyway, I'm gone. I'm done. Ladies and gentlemen, say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Mm. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. I want everybody to play that song tonight. It's on my side. Say it loud. When you say it loud, it will energize you to get that level of... I'm so excited just saying it. I was listening to it a while ago. It's like it just went to my spirit. and I, just, I love listening to James Brown. I feel good. You know what I mean? Those were some music. Those were some days whereby the, the identity of the black man was so powerful. It's like when, when they were more against us, we were stronger. 
through that struggle. But now, we don't even want to say that. We want to say, I'm pitying you. I'm sad, I'm emotional, I'm hurt. Say it loud, I'm black, counteract it, counter, hit against it, hit against it with those words. Young, gifted, and black. Put a militant tune to be young, gifted, and black. You know, maybe more away from the Nina Simone. Young, gifted, and black. What's it? Young, gifted, and I'm black. Young, gifted. Even me, I'm young, man. I'm young. Hey, Terry, how are you, man? Say it loud. I want everybody to say it to me. Come on. Everybody say it to me. Say it loud. Uh, if you watch this video to the end, I want you to sing this song with me. I'll play it. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Yeah? I want to inspire. I want to, I want to fire persons today. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. I don't care. Say it loud. Listen, as I said again, this is me. I'm not telling about it. I'm not kneeling anywhere. I'd rather stand up with a fist. Yeah? With, 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 um, let me, let, let me, let me do this. Let me do this. Let me just take, let me just take this out. Take this out. This is me. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> that is what I would do. Because that shows strength. That shows confidence. I do understand the sentiments about what the kneeling has done. But I'm this. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go better than that. I'm taking two. Two. Two of them. I hope I don't lost the things in this. So I'm serious I am today. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. <laughs> I know I'm saying it over and over, but I just feel like I just keep saying it. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Right? Young, gifted, and black. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Silburn City. I'm all the way from the UK. I don't, I'm the unapologetic voice. We don't care one hoot when it comes on to my people, but I believe in speaking what I believe in. And I don't follow. I lead from the front, not from behind. And I'm not a sheep as well. And I'm just saying it as I see it. You don't have to agree with me. Uh, you can like and share my, my page. Let me hear your views and let me hear what you think as well. YouTube, Silburn TV, Twitter, Silburn TV, Facebook, Silburn TV. And, um, you know, and, and as well, you know, you know, like, share, tell everybody. Going to put that song on my family WhatsApp group. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, bless up, cuz, bless up, bless up, bless up, cuz, bless up, guys. Have a good night. All the best. Peace out. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. That's it. Peace.